Okay, in this video I want to talk about finding the Laplace transform of a function. So this is strictly going to be a calculation video. Um, nothing really conceptual is going to be used. Just, uh, just the definition and actually how you find this Laplace transform. So the definition of a Laplace transform of some function, um, f of t, d has to be defined um, from 0 to infinity. It says if we take the Laplace transform um, of the function f of t, what we do is we multiply that function f of t, we multiply it by this new thing, this e to the negative st, and then we integrate all that with respect to t, and we integrate over the limits 0 to infinity. Um, notice we're going to have this new variable now thrown in there, s, and at the end when we integrate this function, it'll be a function in, term of, in terms of s, um, hence this f of s notation on the left hand side. So really to calculate the Laplace transform, take your original function, it says multiply it by e to the negative st, and then you have to have fun evaluating the improper integral, which can be, you know, moderately tedious, but um, that's the gist of it. So here we have to find the Laplace transform of um, e to the t, so kind of a basic fundamental example here. So again, to find the Laplace transform, all we do is we integrate from 0 to infinity, um, we take our function, we have to multiply our function by e to the negative st, and then again we have to integrate that with respect to t. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to rewrite this first off. Um, so this is 0 to infinity. Um, I have like bases, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. Um, so if I add the exponents, I could write that as t minus st, um, and then again integrating with respect to t. And I think what I'm going to do is simply factor out the t, and then I'll have the quantity 1 minus s dt left over. And remember for improper integrals, we have to simply um, get rid of the infinity, we'll turn that into another variable, maybe I'll call it b, and then we look at the limit as b goes to infinity um, of this function, e to the t times the quantity 1 minus s dt. Okay, so this is what I'm going to have to integrate um, in this problem. Okay, so a couple things here. Um, notice when I'm calculating this integral, Notice if we let, um, let's say, s equal 1. Notice if we let s equal 1, what's going to happen to our integral? Well, we're simply going to have the, the limit as b goes to infinity of 0 to b. Well, if we plug in s equals 1, we're simply going to get e to the 0 power, which is equal to 1. And if we integrate that with respect to t, well, we'll have the limit as b goes to infinity um, if we integrate with respect to t, we'll just simply get t. We've got to plug in our limits of integration from 0 to b. And notice if we compute this, um, we'll simply have the limit as b goes to infinity. We would, have, we would have b minus 0 when we plug in our limits of integration. And notice as b goes to infinity, as b goes to infinity, this is simply going to equal infinity. So this improper integral is actually going to diverge when s equals 1. So when we calculate the Laplace transform, we're going to exclude the value 1 from the domain because it yields an, an improper integral, and somehow those are not going to be of interest to us. Okay, so. Let's assume then, okay, so we still have to integrate, so what happens if s is not equal to 1? Well, if s is not equal to 1, well again, we have to compute this limit as b goes to infinity from 0 to b, e to the t times the quantity 1 minus s dt, and notice now this is simply an exponential function. You can treat the 1 minus s like a constant since we're integrating with respect to t. And you may recall this formula that if you integrate e to the kx dx, so a number times a variable, you basically get the exponential function back and you divide by that variable plus c. So we're going to use the same basic formula. The constant is what you divide by. So maybe just a little integration refresher for you. So when we integrate this, we'll have the limit as b goes to infinity 
Um, again, if we integrate, just as I said, we'll have e to the t times 1 minus s. Again, I'm treating 1 minus s like a constant. So that's what I'll also have to divide by. And you can justify that by using a u substitution. OK, so now we simply have to plug in our limits of integration. So we'll have the limit as b goes to infinity. Um, we'll get e to the b times the quantity 1 minus s over the quantity 1 minus s. And then if we plug in t equals 0, we'll simply get e to the 0, which is 1, over 1 minus s. All right, so we're getting closer. We're almost there. Again, I think we're going to have to split this into a couple different cases, because now we have to think about what happens to this improper integral based on the value of s. So again, notice here, um, let's look at it in two different cases. Notice if, suppose s is less than 1. Well, if s is less than 1, certainly 1 minus s is a positive number. And since b is going towards um, infinity, um, well then, when we take the limit as b goes to infinity, of e to the b raised to the 1 minus s power. Um, again, notice the exponent's just going to get arbitrarily large. It'll be positive. Um, well, this is simply going to go to infinity. Well, what that means is the first part of our integral is going to diverge off to infinity minus this constant. If s is less than 1, this whole integral, again, is going to diverge and equal infinity. Okay, so that's going to be a, a case for us that's not, um, for some reason, will not, you know, it's not as interesting. We will not use that. Um, so we're only, again, interested, it'll turn out we're only going to be interested when the improper integral converges. Okay, well, let's do the other case then. So the other case would be if s is greater than 1. Well, if s is greater than 1, 1 minus s is now going to be a negative number. And if um, you take e and you raise it to a value that gets arbit arbitrarily large but negative, um, okay, so the exponent's going to negative infinity, that will simply equal 0. So if s is less than 1, notice our improper integral is simply going to turn into, we'll have 0 over 1 minus s minus the quantity 1 over 1 minus s. So the first part's gone. If you want to, you can distribute the negative to the denominator. And we'll get 1 over s minus 1 left over. And whew, that is now going to be our solution. That's the Laplace transform for the function e to the t. So it says, in conclusion, the Laplace transform of the function e to the t is going to equal the function 1 over s minus 1. And again, this new function has domain um, 1 to infinity. Okay, So this, this transform variable has to be in the interval um, 1 to infinity exclusive um, for the improper integral to converge. So we have now calculated a Laplace transform. So a little tedious. Um, I'm going to do a couple other examples of the nitty-gritty um, computing them. And then actually, um, you know, obviously the important part is, hey, what do we do with Laplace transforms? And I'm going to show how you can use some Laplace transforms to solve some different um, differential equations. So um, I hope this makes some sense. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to post them. Hopefully me or somebody else can point you in the right direction.